The swine flu is a new virus that's emerged from pigs. We've known about it for some time, but the, for the first time, it's emerged from pig to human and spreading from human to human. Well, as far as we can see at the moment, people are getting ill, but of course we don't know, it's early days. There might be a lot of people who are getting infected and not showing any symptoms at all. But it definitely is spreading from human to human. That's why uh, WHO has declared this level uh, five. This new virus is called influenza A H1N1, actually, and the symptoms, though, are pretty similar to other influenza viruses that we, we've known like, um, in the present and in the past. Uh, the symptoms are rapid onset of the disease, very rapid. You're feeling okay one minute, next minute you're not feeling very well. It's, you feel ill overall. You might start off with aches and pains in your shoulder, which is strange, strange thing, or you might get a headache, cough, uh, temperature shooting up and a desire, a will, a wanting to go to bed and you normally go to bed and stay there for three, four days before you even feel like getting up. We think the new virus is reasonably contagious, yes, because it's spreading from person to person in the United Kingdom, uh, in the United States and of course in uh, Mexico itself. Only time will tell how far it is going to spread. A pandemic is a kind of a global outbreak. There, there is only one virus, really, that fulfills that definition. Because it also, in, 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 there's a definition of speed. It's a rapid spread. So, for example, this virus seems to have appeared in Mexico and then spread rapidly ar around the world to at least nine other countries. And it's spread by someone getting infected in Mexico, getting on an aeroplane, and then nine hours later, landing in London, and that, then they incubated and outcome the symptoms. So it's spread, carried by aircraft, by people, and you can see how easily it could become global. Most of these, in fact, all these influenza viruses, they spread in two ways. A, a common way is from breathing in someone else's cough. So uh, the person says a metre and a half away, they give a whacking cough or a sneeze and you're breathing in, you're breathing in and that's got the virus in it. So, so you've got yourself infected, the virus is in your upper airways. Uh, but another way of getting infected is perhaps even more important uh, and that is people with the disease, they, <coughs> they cough and they cough onto their hand, which they shouldn't do because all the most recent information is they should be coughing into their elbow because people hold your hand to shake hands with you and then the virus that's stuck on your hand it may stay there for several hours then goes onto their hands and then they touch their mouth or rub their nose and touch their eye and they get cross infected so the two ways it's very difficult to know how the how wide this virus is going to go in its global i think it is going to go global uh, but probably with fairly mild symptoms at this stage and it's already in nine or ten countries. All those countries connected with Mexico by aeroplane was probably most of the world, actually. I think hygiene is going to be very important um, in this preventative time. And it, it enables a family, it enables an individual to take things under their own umbrella, as it were, and people should. I mean, we're not going to contain this outbreak just with vaccines and antiviral drugs. We're going to need everyone's help and I think everyone has a responsibility not only to look after themselves, but their family and to stop the virus spreading outwards. You know, and, and with a lot of attention on hygiene, hand washing, killing the virus on the surface, killing the virus on their hands, you can do a lot to break the onward transmission. So I think that's absolutely vital. It, this hygiene business is still not at a high enough level. I know that, I can, I can see how people wash their hands, they're not doing it properly. You've got to spend you know, some time on it. It's no good doing it with water by itself, you need to get a soap. Even better is an antibacterial soap or a disinfectant. And you can say, well, all right, what's the best disinfectant? Well, I don't know particularly what the best one is, but my laboratory has tested Dettol, for example, uh, against influenza viruses. That's specially formulated to kill viruses, and it certainly does. So that's a start anyway. I think it's very important to use a branded 
name. It's very important to do this hand wash properly. You know, you can sing happy birthday to you, you know, a couple of times. That's the length of time. You can sing your national anthem, if you like. That's another way of doing it. Um, this is probably even more important than that. So, but you have to do it vigorously. Um, you're brushing on your soap, and it's better to do it with soap or antibacterial soap or even better disinfectant formulated products. So you, you wash them, and you've got to do it properly. Especially, you've got to rub the surfaces of the fingers and the inside surfaces, which are going to touch someone else and touch surfaces. So with a lot of attention on this side of the hand. Not, you know, concentrate on the inside, that's going to touch things. Uh, and then rinse off and then dry your hands. So that's all pretty, but it takes time. But I think it's time well invested, because none of us want to spend five days in bed feeling ill. None of us want to risk our family getting ill. None of us want to risk elderly people dying, quite frankly. Often water isn't available for washing your hand, you know, if you're on a plane, if you're on a train, traveling. Um, and I think these hand sanitizers are very useful indeed. They're, they're pretty powerful. I mean, they've been specially formulated in the last year against chicken flu, avian flu, and, the, and they will act against uh, pig flu. Uh, so the thing is to get them on your hand and, and again, use them properly. There's nobody just flipping around. You've got to kind of rub them in, let them dry off. And the, another advantage often with them is they keep up their antiviral activity for some time afterwards. That, that's a good thing too. It's pretty important to look in everyone's home, to look at your own home, and try and work out what you do. You know, it's quite interesting to, when, you, when you do that. What, how, what things do you touch in your own home? Keyboards, things for the television, taps, doorknobs, pull chains on toilets, whatever. And once you work that out, those are the things you want to disinfect. I don't think at this stage there's much benefit with these masks. They, the Department of Health here, for example, has bought them. But that's different. That's for people who understand them, understand how to fit them, how to put them on, how to use them, how to dispose of them how to handle them. For ordinary people, I don't think they understand that or do that. Um, and then it induces a bit of panic. If you go out in the street and see people running with masks, you know, it's not a settling situation. And there's no chance of getting a virus infection in the street. Zero chance. You know, you've got to get close to people or touch them. Just walking past them in the street, you won't get infected. So, you know, be cautious with the masks at this stage. I think it's quite important uh, to think carefully what, what you do of someone in fact in your own family. This will happen often, I think, in the next months, even years. You know, what do you do? Uh, the first thing is you try and separate them a bit. However you do that, this distancing, two metres, whatever, if you can get them into a room by themselves, even better. Get them into a room almost like quarantine them. I mean, it won't do them any harm because they don't want to feel very well. They don't want to do anything and it might protect the rest of the family. Well, there's no vaccine at the moment, and that's why the hygiene is so important. I think the hygiene will remain important, even when a vaccine comes. You know, you'll need everything in this show, and there's not going to be enough vaccine for everyone anyway. But everyone can practice good hygiene. It's simple enough, and it's absolutely fundamental in this breaking the chain of onward transmission. We're very well prepared for an influenza outbreak because of all the work, and just, not, just, not just here, in the United Kingdom, around the world. There's, there's so much work, so much investment, so much production, so much new designs of disinfectants. Nothing has stood still over the last five years because of the worry and continuing worry about avian flu. That worry is not going to go away. It's just that the continuing thing, the, the immediate thing threatening us now is the pig. But avian flu will not go away. So. You know, we just have to keep our, everything on, on the up. But we are very well prepared. Yeah, there is some worry at the moment, I know, because you can go out about the safety of port. There always is, once you mention a chicken or a, or, or, or a duck or a pig, it's absolutely safe, 100% safe. There's a lot of information, but our own website is a good place uh, to start. That's hygienecouncil.com. Uh, and if you're in the United States, you can go to the CDC website. 
That's where they describe the etiquette of coughing. Um, in fact, most governments around the world will have a good a website with up-to-date information. WHO is excellent. I, uh, this, this idea of hygiene, you know, comes from, um, in a sense, the early 20th century. Um, we let it go, and now we're trying to pull it back, and we are succeeding in pulling it back. And it's, uh, I think this would be the perfect example of how important it is. We've already seen the MRSAs dropping here, clostridium, dro the figures dropping because of increased interest in hygiene. And now we can apply it to this new threat, and I think it is a real threat.